What's up, YouTube fans, Steam fans, cryptocurrency fans? It's your boy Brit VR. Welcome to the show. Behind me is my website. If you're new to the channel, go check it out after the video and hit the like button. So the news start off today that Sapphire AMD has made a card for Grim. Grim is a privacy cryptocurrency with a new technology, Mimble Wimble. And everybody's minding right now. It just came out. There's no ICO or anything, pre-mine, nothing. You can just go on if you have graphics cards and mine this thing right now. But they made this card specifically for that coin, which I haven't seen yet. This is actually first time I've seen this done. Uh, if you can go to the beginning, Bitcoin was mined on a computers. Then Bitcoin was mined with GPUs. And then after that with ASICs. Let's read part of this and see what they're talking about. Hardware manufacturer Sapphire Technology has developed an exclusive version of its Radon RX 570 video card. The new graphics processor unit has 16 gigabytes of GDDR5 memory instead of the standard 48. The privacy-centric crypto which was launched this month is based on member Wimble protocol and use the Kukuru cycle hashing algorithm that needs between 5.5 and 11 gigabytes of memory. Sapphire believes the card 16 gigabytes will significantly improve its performance in comparison to other mining chips. But the funny thing about this is NVIDIA was pushing towards mining and it looks like AMD well, a company that buys AMD chips is pushing towards mining. AMD really don't care about mining. All they want is their gamers to have their graphics cards to game. So next up, Boosto came out with the new Google extension for YouTubers. Um, it's over here. It's called Social Book. If you guys get a chance, go on your Google Chrome extension and download this. So you'll, you'll see this YouTube page right here. And this is Crypto Blood, and all his information about his channels will pop up. This is for when you're watching out for your competitors. This guy's not my competitor. He's actually a really cool guy that I know. So I'm using him to get him some influence. So after you see all this information, you can click here to view demogra demographics. And you have a couple of things come up here. It's going to download a lot of information. It might take a second. But to get all this information, which you want to know, especially if you're looking for influencers you have to pay a price now the prices are in fiat or you can pay in their coin it's probably cheaper in a coin but i expect you guys if you guys want to use this go buy the coins don't pay with cash now on here there's other things too you can search search anybody that you want and you can do the basic search too also, you're not limited to this. You can do Instagram. So if you want, if you want to go out there and I want to say spy, but want to see what your influencers are doing or have competitors out there, download this extension and check it out. And lastly, uh, from Bloomberg, this MIT guy said he has designed a cryptocurrency better than Bitcoin. Now, I haven't watched the video. I want to wait to watch the video with you guys. But before I watch this, if he says proof of stake, I'm gonna cut myself in the throat. No, seriously. Why? Well, proof of stake really takes away the decentralization. Because when you when you use proof of stake, that means you have to have a bankroll to go buy the coins. When you have mining, I can open up my laptop and mine. I may not be able to get a lot, but if I didn't have any money, I would be able to mine it. You get what I'm saying? So let's check it out and see what he has to say. Yeah, so I think if you look at Bitcoin, you know, it kind of has two different qualities. One is it's become this great sort of version of digital gold almost. And the other is that originally people intended it to be actually used for things, making purchases, you know, interacting with people in a decentralized way, whether you're placing a bet, placing a trade, whatever it may be. And the problem is that Bitcoin's just very slow. And so what these professors are working on is trying to make it a lot faster. So to put this into context, Visa processes 1,700 transactions a second. You say this could process 10,000 transactions a second. How? Yeah, so if you look at Bitcoin, the problem is that 
every computer running in the Bitcoin network has to process every transaction. It's like if you had a calculator and when you did two times two, every other calculator in the world did two times two. And so what these guys are working on is essentially separating that and making it so that you can do multiple calculations in parallel instead of having to do them all kind of sequentially. Now, you, your bet is that this, could, this new currency could go mainstream. Why? Yeah, so I think it's going to be a really long road and pretty difficult. Um, but I think some of the areas where this can be really useful right out of the gate are things like smart contracts and decentralized financial applications, things where Bitcoin just cannot be used at all today because it's so slow. So uh, that said, all of this said, besting Bitcoin may not be such a feat right now. I mean, it hasn't been performing very well. I mean, what's your outlook for the broader market sentiment around cryptocurrency going forward? Yeah, so I think, you know, we've definitely seen a pretty rough past 12 months uh, for the cryptocurrency space. Um, but I think it's always been like that. You know, you've always had these huge kind of run-ups and these huge catastrophic collapses in cryptocurrency. And they're always much faster bear and bull cycles than you saw than you see in regular markets. And so I'm pretty optimistic about the space overall. Um, you know, we've seen a huge drawdown over the past 12 months. Uh, but I think going forward, we're going to see a lot more people just focusing on building technology and trying to actually acquire users. Do you think this scalability issue could be a life and death issue for crypto in general? Yeah, I do. I mean, I think my biggest concern is that if we don't solve this issue within the next few years, um, this tech starts to look more like, say, 3D printing uh, <laughs> in the internet. You know, a cool idea, but isn't really used all that much. So what are the prospects for solving the issue, in yeah. your view? Sorry. What are our chances? Yeah, I think they're actually relatively high. Um, if you look at the challenges the internet had to face to scale, it was much more difficult. People had to lay copper wire in physical locations. Here, they're having to solve technical problems that are hard, but they can be primarily solved with software. And at this point, in early 2019, there's you know, dozens of different proposals for how to do this. And the next step is going to be actually implementing them and testing them out. So Bitcoin, uh, or the crypto market, lost 80% of its value last year. What happens in 2019? Yeah, I think we'll see kind of a still choppy waters and we'll start to slowly grind up over the next few years. Well, um, he's partially right. Currently, Bitcoin is slow. But the Lightning Network is here. You may have a coin that's very fast, but is he gonna have security? Which is very, very huge. If he doesn't have any security, he's gonna have to worry about 51% attacks on his coin. Unless he just have these proof of stake where his only nodes out there, delicate proof of stakes where his own people only running nodes and it won't be decentralized. So I don't know. Go check it out. Leave a comment at the bottom. Let me know what you guys think about that. Um, other than that, check out my website. Um, and I think that's about it. So all you guys have a good day and all you guys have a good night and enjoy the crypto life.